Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hey, greetings. This is Evangelist Mary L. McCracken. And you are listening to the Holy Ghost Takeover Outreach Ministry. And we are certainly happy that you tuned this broadcast in today. And we invite you to sit back, relax, and oh, come and dine with us because truly the Feast of the Lord is going on here. We invite you to visit our ministry at www.holyghosttoday.com. That's www.holyghosttoday.com. When you get to the website, I believe that you will be pleased. There are so many things there to encourage your heart. There are articles to read video clips to see. And of course, there's a phenomenal web store. Many of the DVDs uh, messages that this ministry has done are stored in the web store. So visit the web store and be a blessing. Most of all, after airing this broadcast, tell others about it. Tell your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, hey, about this ministry that God is bringing forth in these last and evil days. Hey, we love you. We thank God for you. God bless. Glory, let's have a word of prayer because how many people know that prayer changes things? Put your hand on yourself and say, I will not forget, hey, what Jesus has done for me. Before we pray, we need to- The title to of the message always. for this broadcast is, I press. The title again is, I press. The subtopic that goes with this message is, I am moving forward. That subtopic again is, I am moving forward. Press means to move by force in a certain direction. And many of you might say, Lord, last year financially, I was further along. Hey, and I don't really know what happened. But yet I press to hear the word of the Lord. Some of you might say, two years ago, my health was much better than it is today. But nevertheless, Lord, I'm going to stay with you, knowing that weeping endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Some of you might be facing foreclosures, job losses, family problems, all kinds of things that I know not of. But nevertheless, you have held the word in high esteem, and you know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you will ever ask or think. Paul recorded it in Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at the 13th through the 14th verse on this wise. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things that are before, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, beginning at verses one through six. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works or of faith toward God, hey, or of the doctrine of baptisms or of laying on of hands or of the resurrection of the dead or of eternal judgment. In other words, Paul is saying, we know all these things. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that we need to be baptized. We know that it is a gift called the laying on of hands. We certainly believe in the resurrection of the dead, and we know that if we live right, heaven belongs to us. Likewise, if we don't, we know that there is a doctrine of eternal judgment. Hey, and Paul said, and this we will do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift 
and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they should fall away to renew again unto repentance, seeing that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and bring him to an open shame. Go with me now, if you please to Mark, the fifth chapter, the 22nd through the 43rd verse. And these scriptures contain stories of two people. One person is Jairus. The other person is the woman with the issue of blood. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell down at his feet. And he besought him greatly, and he said, Master, my daughter lieth at home. Hey, she's at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her, that she shall be healed, and she will live. And when Jesus went with him, there were many people, including his disciples, and so many of the people thronged him. Hey, but little did they know there was a woman. Oh, she was pressing her way through the crowd. This woman had a need, but she had a determination. Glory to God. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, but was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, you know, people of God, we got to hear of Jesus. We got to perceive Christ in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit. And we got to believe that he is able to help us. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press and touched his garment. You know, this woman, she shouldn't have been there. Hey, because with that issue of blood, she was unclean, but she had a dire problem. Hey, and when you have a need, desperate times call for desperate measures. She said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole of this plague. This woman had a strategy. Hey, when she got to Jesus, she didn't even have to touch him. Her faith said if she touched anything on his garment pertaining to him, she would be healed. So she touched him, and immediately she could feel within herself that she was cleansed from that plague. And she knew what had happened, and Jesus, immediately knowing that virtue had gone out of him, stopped and turned around in the press and 